Hi there, Jonah here. Um, tonight I'm going to continue speaking about um, the letters of Jesus Christ to the churches. Um, these letters are, were written to the, church, the seven churches in Asia Minor um, almost 2,000 years ago, but they are also written to us today as different churches which can locate ourselves in the context of the characteristics of these churches described here. Um, and to us as individuals, the Bible, the Bible, you know, each letter ends with the phrase or tends to end with the phrase, um, let him that hath an ear, let him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let him who has an ear sit here what the Spirit says to the churches. Um, like I said yesterday, I believe, I said that the church doesn't have ears. It's the people, the individuals in the churches that have ears. So this letter is addressed to us as well. So without much ado, I'm going to speak very quickly or read to you very quickly what the letter uh, to the church of Pergamum says. And then I'm going to um, do a quick summary of, 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 of the letter to the church of Pergamum. It says, unto the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. So I'm re reading from Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. It says, unto the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan, Satan's throne is. Yet you hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, so that they might eat food, sacrifice to idols, and practice sexual immorality. So also you have some who hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. And that, in a nutshell, is the letter written to the Church of Pergamum. And um, I did a summary of it, like I did for all the other churches. Uh, and here's the summary. Um, so remember, the summary goes according to the characteristics of the name of the church uh, and the verses of Scripture where it's found, the author's self-description, so how Jesus Christ is describing himself to those churches, his observation of their good works, if any, because you'll find that in some churches there were good works and in some churches there were no good works. The highlighted shortcomings, his admonition and warning to those churches or to that church, the implications for not heeding the warnings, and a message to those who overcome. And I'll leave the summary, the full summary of that document, I'll leave it in the description below. So it says, um, so for the church's name is Pergamum or Pergamus. Sometimes you hear Pergamum, sometimes you hear Pergamus. Um, his self-description is the one who has the, who has the sharp sword with two edges. He knows the church's works. He knows where they dwell, where Satan's seat is, and how they held fast the name of Christ. So despite the circumstances in which they found themselves, Despite being at the epicenter of Satan's quote-unquote throne and kingdom at the time, they held fast the name of Christ and did not deny the faith. They were faithful in martyrdom despite slain. So you remember the story of Antipas in there. Now, the reason why I mention these things is because Jesus Christ is looking at our lives individually and collectively and looking at the things that were doing well as well as the things that were not doing so well. He mentions the things that we're doing well so that we can continue doing them and the things that we don't do so well so that we can stop them. Now he says, on, with, respect, with respect to the highlighted shortcomings, he says, you tolerated those who held the doctrine of Balaam, that is the encouraged entrapment, idolatry and fornication. And you can go read that story back in the Old Testament. I think it's in the book of Numbers or Deuteron no, not, not Deuteronomy. I think it's Numbers. I, I don't remember precisely where, but... It's certainly in the Old Testament, the whole story of Balaam and how Balak tried to use Balaam to entice the children of Israel. So you see everything about entrapment in there. So entrapment, idolatry, and fornication. 
It says, you also tolerated those who held the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. This the Lord hates. You will see it. You see this whole business of the doctrine of the Nicolaitans repeating itself in, 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 um, among these letters. So it wasn't just one church that was guilty of it. Several churches were guilty. And then he says to them to repent. In other words, repent from those bad things that you're doing. He says, if you don't repent, I will come to you quickly and I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. In other words, God will be the one, Jesus will be the one resisting them with the sword of his mouth. Of course, we know that the sword of Jesus' mouth is the word of God. In other words, the word of God will judge them. I will come to you quickly. I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. When he says you come to them quickly, it's talking about coming to them suddenly. So these are the implications of not heeding his warning. And then he says, To the overcomer I will give to eat of the hidden manna. I will give to him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receives it. So that's that's kind of the end of the story. And like I said, I'll, I'll put a link to, the, to this document in the description below. Let me just end by saying... The reason why these things are important is because the church's time here is nearly short. And you and I need to take this opportunity as God's people here on earth right now, right here and right now, to make our report cards better before we go. We have a small window of opportunity to improve our report cards before the Lord, before he comes to take his church away. Now, this is not to say if your report card does not improve, you will go to hell or you will not make the rapture. This is to say that if your report card does not improve, there are certain rewards that you would have been that would have been made available to you that you will not receive. Plus, you know, you you and I will be disappointed in ourselves if we did not do all that we could have done before we left this life. You know what? I will stop here and I will not speak anymore. Safe to say, I can understand if many people find this boring. I can understand if many people find this inexpedient they want to hear more exciting stuff and so on but this is important in fact technically speaking of all the exciting things that you find in the book of revelation this is the most important piece for the church this is jesus giving the cheat sheet to the church about how they should live in these last times i will come again and i'll speak next time on the church at thyatira and then subsequently sardis philadelphia and laodicea Okay, take care. God bless you. Bye. And for those who patiently listen to the end, I really, really appreciate you and thank you.